Hello from Steamworks Studio and welcome to another episode of how to code using Scratch and make games. Um, I hope you will enjoy this today with us. Uh, this is the game that we are going to make. It's called Flying Cat. Okay, so let's get all started. Uh, you would need to go to scratch.mit.edu as usual. So that's where we're going to go next. So once you are here, you will need to uh, click out uh, the, the tutorial that comes up so that you have this space. Okay, for this game, we are not going to be using the cat sprite. We are going to hit X right here to delete the, uh, the cat that is being shown by default. So we're gonna click that and get rid of that. Next thing, we are going to go and get another scratch, uh, another um, sprite, and we'll actually need four different sprites. So let's get clicking on this guy right here. Um, so we go to click here, and the first thing we're going to choose is the flying cat, which it's called cat flying right here. Do you see my mouse? That's what we're going to select. If you cannot see that. This is the one that I'm talking about, cat flying. That's what we need to click. So that's number one. The second thing is we need the buildings. In order to do that, we again click on the sprite, the cat head, and then look for buildings. If you see right here in the middle of the screen, right here is buildings. So that's the second sprite that we need. We got that. So we have buildings, we have a cat, the flying cat. The next sprite that we need is called the cloud. So we can go right here and look for the cloud. You will see cloud right here. Right here. So once you click on that, you will get the cloud. The fourth sprite that we need is called the tennis ball. And we'll do that by looking for a tennis ball. One quick way is to type here tennis like this and you'll get the tennis ball right here. Okay, so we have a cloud, we have the, uh, the cat and the building. So those are the four sprites that we need for this game. So the first thing that we're going to do is, um, we're going to start by saying something as an introduction when the game starts. So when, so I have to first go to the cat in order for it to, so make sure that you have clicked on this icon first. So make sure you click on that and it turns blue like this. Okay, next we are on the cat sprite and the game is gonna start. When I click on the green button, what do I wanna do? When the cat starts, what we want to do is go to the front, regardless of who, what image is showing up, we have to say, go to the front. So you can say something like this, go to front layer. So this is always going to be on the top. And then we can use that to say something. So what we can say is, for one second, just at the beginning of the game, we're going to say, something like this, my time come to fly. It's just an introductory message. So this is how you do it. At the beginning of the game, it's just going to pop that for a second. You can customize it, make it two seconds if you want, uh, before the, the cat starts. The other thing we want to do is always, and we'll use the keyboard strokes for that, the up, down, left, and right arrow key. What we want to do is make the cat go up and down, left and right, using our keyboard strokes. So how are we going to do that? So we're going to do that by saying when, I click a certain button, so I can say when I, When up arrow is clicked, when here. So you can 
and say when up arrow key pressed. When up arrow pre, uh, is key pressed, then what increases? If you go this way, Y increases vertically. So that's what we're gonna say. When up arrow key pressed, change Y by by 10. So we can go up. So how do I test that? When I run this, is going to go up, okay? Then we can quickly right click and say duplicate and it'll make another block. And this time we can say down arrow and it is the reverse. So we are subtracting instead of adding 10. So now I can go up and down. Right? If you want to make it go even faster than that, you can make it 15. This is just, how fast you want to go up and down. So that's pretty good. Can move up and down. The other thing we need to do is left and right. So all you need to do is take one of these, duplicate and say right arrow. What changes when you do horizontally, like going sideways, you need to change X for that. So you, you will basically take Take this and do change X by 15. If you are going towards the right, if you are going towards the left, then you subtract. It's exactly the opposite. So with that, our cat is all ready to go forward, backwards, up and down. So make sure you test your program as you are programming things. Once you're done with that, we will move to the next um, uh, sprite to do interesting things. What we're going to do for the building right here. So make sure that you click on I'll just go to draw and show you. Make sure you have clicked on the buildings next. If you are there, what we can do for the building is, when I click the green start button, this is the script for the buildings. I need to forever, I, I want to make an effect that this uh, the cat is flying. In order to do that, I will have to do forever. The building, if you remember the dimensions or the measurement of this whole thing, this is called the x-axis. And if you remember this much from here to here is 240. If I want to hide the building behind somewhere out behind the wall, I would go to minus, uh, or sorry, I would go to 250 so that it's way out there and it's not visible. So that's what I'm going to do. In the forever loop, I'm going to first set the place of the building to hide beyond 240, it's 250, which is beyond, okay? So we're going to first hide it. And then I'm going to choose a new look every single time by saying next costume. And then I'm going to repeat it again and again and again and slowly move it. So I'm going to say repeat in the forever loop 100 times and change x by minus five. So that means I'm going to slowly make it move in steps of minus five. That means you're going which way? You're going towards the left. When you subtract, it really makes it move this way, okay? Minus five, minus five, minus five, minus five, like that. So that's what we're going to do and test the program now. So. When I run it, you will see it'll change the costume and the buildings will flip. Why does it do that? 
The reason it does that is if you look at the buildings and look at costumes right here, if you click there, you will see that the buildings actually is a whole set of sequence of images. And that is what is happening. It is going through next costume, next costume, next costume. And that's how you can make a nice effect. Okay, so now we'll test this one more time. That looks pretty neat. You're able to change your buildings and it looks like the cat is flying. Well and good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make uh, lots of additions to the cat uh, code. So what we're going to do is go back to the cat. So make sure your cat is selected. Make sure you select the cat first. So we are back to this score. I'm going to make some space for myself. So I'm going to just position these things so I have some more space. Okay. Next. When I click the green button, it is completely okay to have multiple scripts. Okay. So what I'm doing is forever. I want to make it look like the cat is actually moving. So in order to do that, I can do something called next costume like this. And then I can wait for a little time, like a very small amount of time. So at the beginning of the game, when the cat is saying something, we have a one, we have a one second wait, if you remember, that I need to add also. And then going forward, it's going to start moving. So if you look at the cat now, it looks like he's trying to move around. So this is the effect of the script right here. Okay, so that's one part done. The other thing I want to do is when the cloud or the ball hits or the cat hits the ball or the cloud, then it should change scores. So I need a score variable. We did variables before and I'm going to use that again. The way to do that is you go right here, click on the variables, go to make variables, which is at the top right here. When you do that, you can give it a name called score and click okay. What it will do is add a variable right here. So at the beginning of the game, your score is zero. So you can say right here, set score to zero. So I could create another block right here in the script and say set, make sure you click on the triangle here and choose score, set score to zero. By default, it'll be something like my variable, but the one I want to change is the score. So it says set score equal to zero. Then forever, I have to detect if I touch the cloud or not. So I'll say if, I have to sense whether I touch the cloud and that will be in the sensing, the light blue icons, the cyan icons. So it say if touching, cloud, I will uh, play a sound, I will play a sound, I will need a different kind of sound, so I'll go to the sound library like this, and I'll add here, B-O-I-N-G, like point. I just added the sound to this, from the sound library, and I'll switch it and say boing. So start sound boing and if I click the, or if I'm able to click the cloud, that means oh, I got wet and I'm going to lose point. So I'm going to change my variable. So change my variable by 
which is called score by minus one. That means I subtract one point away if I hit the cloud. And then I wait for one second before going forward. So this is a, let's give it a shot. So if I, right now the cloud is not moving, but I, if I go close to it, I'll get that sound and my points will reduce. So that's good. I haven't made the cloud move yet, so it'll come later. We are preparing the cat first. Okay. The other thing I want to do is very similar to this, this particular script. I want to do, if I touch tennis ball, then I should score one more, not to reduce the score, but increase the score. So I can actually go right here, click on it with the right mouse button once and hit duplicate. So I have a copy of this. And this time, instead of touching the cloud, I'm going to change it to my tennis ball. If I touch tennis ball, I will change this to pop, a different sound, and change my score to plus one instead of minus one. And everything else remains the same. So now I have the ball and the cloud. Good. So everything that we wanted to do for the cat is now complete. And we are going to go now to the cloud. So we, we click on cloud next. So let's go there, click on cloud. You have nothing written there. We're going to start with when clicked. We are going to forever. Now we it's about moving the cloud. So we have to change the exposition uh, slowly. So first of all, I want to start the cloud at some random position. So I'm going to say go to random position. And then for the random position, I want to set and hide. The, remember 250 was beyond the screen width on the right hand side. So I'm going to hide the cloud first. And then I'm going to do next costume. And then repeat this over and over again, 50 times. While I'm doing that, I'll change the X coordinate. That means go horizontally by a little bit faster, minus 10. Okay, so let's see the effect. Okay. So now the cloud is going at random positions. So I have to avoid the cloud, otherwise I lose points. So I have to be going. If I don't react very quickly, I can hit the cloud. Uh -oh. Okay, so that's how the cloud will work. And we need to do something very, very similar for the tennis ball, but the changes, it's actually identical if you look at it. So we can do the same code. This time choose your tennis ball, make sure. And then we're going to do the same exact code. We're going to do when clicked and then forever. Go to random position. Set X to 250. So that it hides behind uh, on the right side of the frame, the window. Do a next costume. So it changes costumes and then repeat this 50 times. Like that. And change X by minus 10 so that it moves towards the left. Okay, so now you have, if, if you hit the ball, then you win points. So I'm going to try to get my scores up, click the ball, oh, there you go. So that's how the game works. Sometimes they are at the same position, so it's hard to, well, that's the purpose. So now I'm getting some points. 
But if I hit the cloud, it'll go down. So that's how the game works. Um, so again, you have all this code for the cat. For the building, it's very simple. We are using a trick here to hide the images beyond the window and then bring it and move it slowly, 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 like with minus five, many, many times. That's the effect of it flying. And then you have the cloud and the tennis ball. So that's, that's the complete game. So try this and enjoy. Uh, please give us feedback. Uh, thank you, and we'll meet again soon. Thank you. Bye.